All. I hope you're doing great. Let us continue with our computer chapter. In our previous class, we have learned about different parts of computer, keyboard, mouse, monitor, and CPU. In CPU, we have learned about the different parts of CPU. It's control unit, which is having arithmetical logical unit, and then the storage unit, which is having the memory unit, right? So, we have learned how our CPU controls the different part of our computer and it does all the processing of the instructions or the commands which we give it to the computer system. Now, I have a question for you children. Just imagine you have a busy day. You have a busy day and then you are supposed to do many work on the single day. What will you do? The better option is to make a list, correct? And as and when you have to keep checking your list and just check the things which you have been completing on the same day and which is pending, which has to be completed. Yes, isn't it a proper way of doing the task? Is it not an organized way? If you're not doing the things in a proper organized way, you can, it's, you can tend to forget the things. You'll tend to Forget the things. Yes, exactly the same way. Even the computer does it work in a proper manner. So let us learn some more things about this interesting device. About making the list. See, if you're making a list using a pencil, it's easy for us to erase it up, correct? Or if you're writing it with a pen, it becomes a permanent imprint, correct? But if you're writing with a pencil, if someone else rubs it off, the things, the information written on that is vanished. Exactly the same way, whenever you're typing something on a computer, yes, when you open a computer and start typing, some, start typing something on the computer, whatever information you're typing is getting stored on computer's memory, right? See, whenever we are trying to write something on a paper or computer, we need some space to write all these things, isn't it? Yes, it is. So whenever we are writing something, we require space. The space where we are writing is our primary memory. It is the basic memory where we are writing everything. Unless and until, children, just be careful about this one. Unless and until we save whatever we are writing, it is in the primary memory. The moment when we save the data, whichever we are writing, it moves from primary memory to the secondary memory memory. So whenever we are typing something, okay, just let's for instance, take it as an example. Whenever we are typing something, we haven't yet saved. Okay, we have not yet saved. You're typing an essay, maybe an essay on India. Okay, so when you're typing, where are you typing? I just now said it, right? You're typing on the notepad, but it is getting saved under the primary memory. But Meanwhile, when you're typing something, your computer is turned off. The power is gone or there's a loose connection and your system has got switched off. So whatever you have written, which was stored under primary memory, this memory loses all the data. So whatever you have learned, sorry, whatever you have written on the computer is all gone. Why is it so? Because it was just on primary memory and this memory becomes completely empty. So it is exactly like how you have written something with pencil and somebody has rubbed it off. Yes. Why is it so? Because primary memory is a temporary memory. It is just to give some space for you to write until and unless you save it. Once you 
click the save button on the computer for your file then it gets shifted from primary memory to the secondary memory and secondary memory is the permanent memory of the computer system primary memory is not the permanent memory yes okay now we all know that computer can store huge 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 data right uh, and in term in the form of files and documents what all can a computer store computer can store a written file it can store a musical file that is audio file it can store a movie which is audio and video file it can store the games it can store images yes which are not deleted until we delete it once you store the information inside the computer or save it it does not get deleted until we ourselves go and delete the information this is how a uh, what do you say memory is been stored and when we delete when we ourselves go and delete any of the file is when the memory loses the data correct so whatever you save i repeat whenever you're doing something whenever you're typing something or you have stored something in the computer and you do a save right whenever you do save this particular information whichever you're saving on the computer directly goes into the secondary memory until you save where it will be it will be in the primary memory so once you hit the save button the informations travel from primary and it get shifted to secondary memory of the computer yes uh, let us name some of the secondary memory examples one basic thing the memory which is fixed inside the computer cpu right that is called as an hard disk yes so hard disk is also a secondary memory then comes your cd drives your pen drives yes your dvd drives all these are secondary memory where you can save your data for longer period so if i want to conclude it has to be secondary memory is used to stay store large amount of data for long period and the data is not lost okay it does not get deleted until we delete it until we delete it by ourselves even if you if you switch off your computer if you turn off your computer also the data will not get deleted yes exactly so computer can store a large amount of data now when i speak again we always keep your using the word data 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 yes how many how much of data can a computer store have you ever thought of it yes children this data is also a number yes we can calculate in number see how we can calculate our height how much we have grown by measuring in the meters or centimeters correct what is our weight how much is our you know complete body organ all together weighs yes we can measure that also how do we measure we measure in kilograms grams or kilograms exactly the same way our data is also been measured yes it is also measurable and how it is measured it is measured in bytes like how we use centimeter inches meter kilometer kilogram like that we have something called byte the memory space of the computer is measured under bytes it is measured under bytes now what is a byte i'll explain you in a while okay i just have a question we keep downloading many things right in on our computer system and also on our mobiles so whatever you download maybe a game maybe a song maybe a video any app where does it go and get stored 
it goes and gets stored in our hard disk where does it go and store it gets stored in our hard disk children i just told hard disk is the secondary memory of a computer system yes coming back to our data yes see we keep hearing right we have heard a lot of mb gb what is this mb gb tb this is the way your internet or your space is measured your data space is measured just now i said that the data is measured under a byte and the smallest uh, digit of storage in a computer is called as bit it is like bit like how we have milligram we say right in milli after milligram then gram comes and then kilograms comes right or like uh, meter before meter centimeter comes and then millimeter comes right so likewise there are bit each bit now one interesting fact i want to tell you guys computer does not understand english language it does not understand a b c d e f g z it does not understand that secondly computer does not understand 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and the number goes like that then what do computer understand computer understands only 0 and 1 it understand only 0 and 1 how is it possible yes children but we communicate okay but we communicate to the computer in normal english language only we write hello computer please play a song or we whatever we are typing in the computer we are typing in english only then where how how is it zero and one coming in picture children every alphabet is converted by the computer in zero and one only like how we have roll numbers in the school correct even after we having a name our name but still we are giving some we have given some roll numbers right roll number 1 come here roll number 2 come here roll number 3 exactly the same way our names are our alphabets are having a combination or is it only 0 and 1 it can be combination of zeros and ones only it can be 0 1 or 100 anything and everything in zero and ones so this zero and one are called as binary digit what are we call what do we call this as we call it as binary digit why not 2 3 4 no computer does not understand 2 3 4 5 6 also it understands only zero and one every alphabet and other numbers apart from zero and one they are converted into zeros and ones and this is how your computer reads so whenever you are typing an alphabet maybe you have typed an alphabet 1 sorry a b or whatever that is converted into 0 and 1 okay and each 0 or each 1 a single 0 or a single 1 of whatever you have typed is called a bit what it is called as it is called as a bit and in a byte there are 8 bits so 8 a time Zero and one, whatever you have written. So eight times zero and one, whatever you write together, eight things, eight zero and ones together become one byte. Yes. So a group of eight bits is called a byte. A group of eight bits is called as a byte, denoted by B. So now let us see. One bit. is either a zero or a one eight bits together is called one byte eight bits equals to one byte 
1 kilobyte is equal to 1024 bytes. 1 megabyte is equals to 1024 kilobytes. 1 gigabyte, we say, right? 1 GB is equals to 1024 MB. MB means megabyte. So nowadays we always hear, right? We always speak about our mobile phone capacity. Oh, my mobile phone is having 124 GB space or 64 GB space or more than that. So what is that? It is 1024 megabytes and one megabyte is having 1024 kilobytes. Likewise, a byte is having eight bits. So this is what a computer memory is in. Yes. Now, children, can you just think of some hardware part of your body? Hands, nose, mouth, cheeks, ears, eyes, head, everything. Correct? Can you think, touch your thinking? You're thinking, right? You keep thinking whole of the day. You think about some eating things. You think about playing. Can you touch your things? Can you touch your thoughts? You can't. You always speak. Now, right now, I'm also speaking. But am I able to touch my words, which is come out of coming out of my mouth? No, right? So, but still we are able to do it. Yes? Just like that, computer is also having hardware parts, which we can touch and see but to make those computer work we have to put a software inside that software is the written instructions software are the written instructions to make the computer work can we touch this software no but we know that softwares are present and we are able to see it on the monitor screen even though if you are not able to see the software but still it is present inside the system. For example, let's take an example of washing machine. Children, in washing machine, how is it working? It is working with the help of a software. Can you see the software on the monitor screen? No, because there is no monitor available on our so uh, washing machine, but some sort of software is placed inside it to make the machine work. Exactly the same way, our computer system is having software, but we are able to see it because of the help of monitor. So what does the software do? It does all, exactly what our brain does. How we think, right? How we think and according to our thinking, our body works, right? If you feel like, if you think about food, our body feel like having some food, you go and eat it. Yes, likewise, like how, a like how a human body without any thoughts and intelligence is just like a machine which cannot feel and take an action. So what does our thought do? Our thought actually guides us how to do our work. In the same way, children, computers have different parts which we can see and touch. Those parts are called as hardware parts. And to control this hardware part and make it work according to the user's instructions, we need a software. We cannot touch the softwares because softwares are the written instructions which are feeded inside the CPU. I hope you understood till here. If you have any doubts, you can please feel free to contact me. Until then, bye-bye.